Hi everyone, this is a quick session where we uh, get to start, you know, talking about the next step in OData Neo. Um, in the past, you know, we worked on the kind of foundation services that basically takes care of, you know, taking in a string query and then turn it into a bunch of tokens and then it projects these tokens and then at the very end it spits out uh, what we call O tokens. So let me kind of visualize, you know, what we what we have accomplished here so far. So we basically went and built a tokenization service. Let me zoom in in here a little bit. So here is a tokenization service. And then we basically went and created three more of these, you know, to kind of separate the responsibility. So we basically went and said, you know, projection service. And then O tokenization service. Right, so now that all of these are completed, we get to now orchestrate that work, right? We need a, a an orchestration service to set up in here. And this orchestration service will basically go and say, you know, I need to communicate with these services and send a query to them, you know, and out of that query, I'm going to return a the raw O tokens that can be transformed into anything else, right? So our input here will be a string, an OData string query, a raw OData, right, coming in here. And then the output will be, you know, what's coming from the other side would be something that is, this is input, and then the output here will be a, a more formalized uh, uh, O tokens, right? And we worked with the select piece just because it's a a good quick kind of horizontal pass that we can work with. This would be O tokens, you know, coming out from here. It's just one O token with all the nested, the root O token with all the nested pieces coming out of it. Okay, so far so good. But just to give you a high level of what's going to happen next, you know, what's going to happen is that we're going to have a coordination service sitting on top of this. And this coordination service will basically go and say, Here's my coordination, and based on the query that's coming in, I'm going to return whatever the requester wanted, you know, as an output, right? So what's going to happen here is that we're going to go and say, this is my O serialization. Here it is. You know, uh, uh, con con conversion orchestration service, right? And this conversion orchestration service will have expression service, you know, raw query service, raw uh, query service, and maybe SQL service, right? So each one of these will basically go and say, I need to bring OData query back and forth, you know, from a, a particular command into another command. You know, a, a high level example of this would be like, let's say you're sending in a, a, a uh, let's say, a dollar sign select equals name like this you know the output would be something that trans if we if we choose the the sequel for instance the output will be uh, uh, select name from you know whatever entity you know XYZ basically so so this is the equivalent of that right how's this gonna work you know how are we gonna plan this out we'll see what we really need to do right now is just to basically orchestrate the work that all of these three services are doing. So all of these are green, and now this is the one that's in progress that we basically want to work with. All right, so let's so let's try this out. Let's let's kick off our OData kind of session here real quick. Let's see. OData. Let's see. Okay. I might have I might have done this on the other machine. Okay, let me get that from GitHub from GitHub real quick. Here we go. Oh data is trying to find the so this is Odata Neo and then this should be under right there. So this is under Odata Foundation Odata Neo. All right. Let's open that up and let's see how we're going to do something like that. Here we go. All 
All right. Okay, so let's just take care of the setup first because this is the most important part, you know, to set up our service, right? So let's let's pull latest and let's run all the tests, make sure everything is running correctly. So I'm just going to go down here and say we still have that problem with with uh with the dot .net internal uh, or internal mock, so let's say .net uh, test. Let's run that real quick. There we go. Right, I have three passing, fourteen passing, and three, and these three are, I'm assuming the service exceptions, which is which are the ones that, you know, we basically want to fix with. Um, let me let me increase the uh, the screen here just so people on their phones can see what's going on. 150. That should do the trick, I hope. And let's go back here. All right. Okay. So you have the you know the services sitting in here, and you basically have tokenization projections and uh, O tokenization service. Great. Now we. We now want to go basically and say, okay, with this with this in mind, let's go ahead and fix the the orchestration service. I'm going to create a new branch in here. Okay, so here's users Hassan Habib orchestrations dot o tokenization uh, service. Okay, okay. Let's do that. Let's create. A, an orchestration folder, 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 uh, folder in here. So it's orchestrations, and then out of these orchestrations, let's create a O tokenization. It's O tokenization orchestration service. O tokenization. So it's plural because it's a namespace, and then let's create an interface. Of course. So this is I O token. I O tokenization orchestration service. So that's one. And then the other one here is the uh, let's put a copyrights in here. And then uh, let's do public like this. Hey, <laughs> and then uh, let's. Let's let's do this. So what do we uh, what do we expect to return? We're expecting to return an O token, right? And this is here will be O tokenize query, right? And the input will be an O data query. Okay, so it's gonna take an O data query, you know, and it's gonna go and say, let me communicate with all the services that I need, you know, to kind of bring out that O token outside of this. So it's gonna go for the tokenization service, projection service, and then O tokenization service, and do all that work, and then come back and basically uh, process that. There will be some conversion here down the road, and we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, something called um, um, uh, Euclid, Euclid's law of axiom. We're going to need to use something like that in here, I predict. But let's just build uh, the concrete class for this. So this is O tokenization orchestration service here we go and then let's here's a partial class and this guy will take from o tokenization o tokenization orchestration service there you go and then that guy how long is this guy 95 i think we still have time so here's the service and then let's add our dependencies here so our dependencies in that exact order. So I tokenization service, that's number one. So I need that guy to come in. There is tokenization service. I also need to have the I uh, projection service. See the the chronological order of things helps a lot, right? Because without that chronological order, how are you supposed to do, you know, your, your code is supposed to kind of convey some kind of meaning, you know, when you're building it this way. So this should be should this should be the meaning of it, and then the last one of it was which is I tokenization, I tokenization service. Uh, o, o, o tokenization, O tokenization service. Right. So this is O tokenization service. Okay, great. 
Now what? Um, since I treat it like kind of one word, I'll just owe to organization service because it looks kind of weird. I don't know. It looks a little weird this way. Okay, here's a little magical trick. If you select all of these, do control period, it'll basically create the, you know, kind of the uh, the constructor for you. And now with this new trick that I learned, you can now select this and do Alt Shift semicolon, and it'll select all the uh, semicolons, and then it, if I do this, it will just fix them all for me. You know, the less you touch the keyboard, the better. You know, that's basically the, the trick. Uh, sorry, the less you touch the, the mouse, the better. The less you touch the mouse, the better. Okay, Control K E. This is cleaned up, and then we have the service. Let's go and write some tests. So let's go down here, services, a new folder, orchestrations, and under orchestrations, we need a service called O tokenization, O tokenizations, right? And now we need to write the tests for this guy. Here we go. So this is O tokenization orchestration service. And this tokenization orchestration service, we basically need to mock a bunch of dependencies. Here's public partial, private, read only, mock. Uh, and, oh, it's funny. We never, uh, we never had to use mock in here because of the, because we never had to call any dependencies. This is the first time we actually kind of mock dependency and start building services in the uh, kind of traditional way. Cool, cool. This is this is good news. Okay, so this is this will be the uh, I tokenization service. This is tokenization service mock private read only mock I projection service. This projection projection service mock and then we have a mock i uh what is it i projection service and then we want the i tokenization service so this is uh, o tokenization service mock see that see the o tokenization this way so you know looks a little bit better right this also should be i o tokenization service that's a mistake o tokenization service like that yeah that o tokenization service okay perfect Okay, so we have that in here. Let's go ahead and oh yeah. So the, what I was trying to say is that this this looks a little bit better than than saying O tokenization O O lowercase and T uppercase kind of looks weird. Maybe a code rub that we can clean across that repository. Let's go down here, and then the last thing I want to do, and it's very likely that we might need something called I compare logic, which is just another library that we need. To basically go and say, I want to be able to c compare two objects, right? So if you haven't followed this before, you know, mock when you're trying to verify that a particular object is being passed in. Sometimes you have to verify the uh, the actual object, right? Sometimes you have to go and say, well, um, you know, I want to be able to. I expect something similar to that, something similar to this you know, kind of component that we want to pass in, right? It's not the exact same component because it's being created within that service. So there is no way to get the same reference. There got to be a way that mock kind of says, you know, there's an easy way to do it. They will say something like it is the same as, and that's how we have been working this way. But I'm hoping that they evolve that at some point in time. Anyway, the last guy that we want to test is the the, the subject of test is I tokenization orchestration service. This is O tokenization orchestration service right here. Here's a CTOR. This dot tokenization mock equal this dot projection mock. Here's my projection mock and here's this is my O tokenization service mock and here's our mock here. Perfect, perfect. And then the last thing I want to pass these mocked in, you know, services to my to my orchestration service, right? So let's go here and say this dot o tokenization orchestration service equal new o tokenization orchestration service. Tokenization service because now you know the order, you know. See, it kind of it kind of helps you in a in a nice way because 
now that you know the order of these things, you could just go in and be like, okay, this is this is how I'm gonna do this. You know, this is how I'm gonna kind of handle. I know the order because of the chronological uh, order of things, right? So this here is O tokenization service mark and object done. Okay. Now while we're doing that, it would be nice if there was a way that I can kind of without using the mouse I could just do this that would be cool right anyway if you do control period it will say add parameters hopefully uh, let's see why this guy is mad tokenization projection tokenization orchestration service did I forget something oh that's for the tests oh, my bad that's a bad name Okay, now it's better. Okay, perfect. No wonder it was telling me there are no parameters, right? So add argument name. There you go. So now we have the arguments. Great. What else do we need to do? We need to basically build what we expect to be the select statement, right? There's a bunch of select statements that we need to work with. And we need to verify that we're passing the sorry the tokenization statements you know that we're passing in we need to verify that we're passing the right things to the right services how the heck are we gonna do that right let's go ahead and write a test start with a failing test simple failing test and then we'll work our way up there is that logic so that takes care of the logic for this and then let's clean this up you go here's a fact public void should o tokenize uh, o data query okay cool we have this query we have this in here control k e given when then and here's my query we're gonna randomize this query at some point in time but here is my input query and my input query is dollar sign select name like this okay so what do I expect to come from the other from the other side from the outside right what I expect is that my my O token expected O token to come out with whatever you know the the surface responds with but I want to make sure that I'm passing the right thing so I want to make sure that I'm actually doing the right um, uh, the right mapping to these you know inputs right so this can be create random O token totally no problem there it doesn't really have to match because I'm not testing that it's doing the right logic and it's returning the right logic it would be nice but it's not necessary. I just want to make sure that I'm calling the right services, right? So, okay, I want to go down here and basically say, here is my expected token that, that will come back, a token array that will come back, you know, from the first service call. Okay, so here is O token, sorry, token array. Right, and this will be returned tokens. Now this is a new token array that has a bunch of tokens. So what are all these tokens going to entail? You know, these tokens are <coughs> are going to have all the cool stuff that we have. Did they, let's see, what did they do? Did they do that? <laughs> all right. So what do we have? We have a word, right? And we have the value, right? And the word would be here, select, I guess, right? And then we have new token and token type would be a separator and that would be the equal sign and then the new token in here would be the token type because this is what we're really testing with the service is that it's going to do some mapping for us so we want to actually make sure that this mapping happens right okay and we have a word in here and this word would be name so I think that's pretty much what we expect this guy to be since the right side is clear Let's do var in here. Okay. 
what else do I want? So this is what's, what the tokenization service is going to give back to me, right? Now I want to send back something else. So var expected, right? Uh, input projected tokens, right? So that will be projected new projected tokens array. Right, that's the orchestration service taking that existing one and converting it to something else, right? So what do we expect to pass in? So it'd be token, projected, token. Uh, yeah, this one is done anemically, right? So the raw value would be dollar sign select, and then the token type would be the same word, and then the projected token type would be unknown because we don't know or not, I, unidentified. That's what we're going to be passing in. That's what the projection service is supposed to be doing, right? That's that's the whole point of it. But then there's a bit more, right? Because it's breaking things apart for us. So there are going to be a couple more of these, right? They're going to be an equal sign, token type separator, and then unidentified would be, um, yeah, it would still be unidentified. Right, and then this one here would be the name, and that's a word, and that's unidentified. So that's what we expect to pass in as input to this guy. Okay, whatever comes back, we need to also test again that it's, you know, passing it correctly to the to the right aspect of this. Ideally, I would do this test like in smaller bits and pieces, but you know, if you've been following these videos, you should be able to kind of figure out, you know, where I'm headed with this. So what are the returned projected tokens? It will be exactly pretty much this. Returned projected tokens. And it will be pretty much the same, except, well, we decided to ignore some of these, right? So we decided to go and say, let's see, what was the projection service doing? If you look at the tests, projections, logic. We basically went in and I said, if I send you filter, you should give me back that filter is a keyword. That's right. Right. And then in these projected tokens, we basically went and said, here is my equivalent. Right. So select equal. Right. So random keyword, that's still a keyword. And then equal is a an assignment. And then there is a property, keyword assignment, right? OK. So there will be keyword, projected token type, and then there is assignment, and then there is property. Cool, cool, cool. So pretty much that same guy, except that this will be keyword. This guy here will be assignment. And this guy here will be uh, property. That's what you know. What's gonna come back? But it doesn't matter. We just want to make sure that we're doing the right mapping, you know, from one place to the other, right? Now we need to have an expected. Okay, let's collapse these just so people see what's happening. Now we need to have var expected input uh, O tokens. So we're sending an O token array this time. And we're getting back just one O token. Whatever that O token may be, it doesn't matter. Absolutely doesn't matter in any way, shape, or form. So here's a new O token. And this O token will be coming in like what? It's going to come in as it, it has the projection type. That's correct. And it has a type in it, right, which is unidentified because we don't know. And then the raw value, which is select. Oh, this is going to be an easy one. I thought this would be a little bit uh, tougher, but this is going to be an easy one. OK, and then we're also passing in a couple more of these, right? So we're going here. Now, the O token itself it doesn't really matter. Like, whatever comes back from, from that service, although that we can build it up, but it's completely outside of the purpose of this uh, of this practice. We just want to test that the foundation, sorry, the orchestration service is doing the mapping properly. That's all that it is. 
Okay, so so this is keyword. This is gonna be an assignment. The raw value is equal, which we're gonna lose anyway, right? And then there is a property, which would be the name, right? And then the last thing here is O token, random O token. And let's go create a random O token since we're at it. Uh, private static filler O token. Create random O token filler. Create O token filler. So that is new filler O token like this. And then private static create random. Create random O token which will basically call the filler and just do create. There you go. Just like that. Okay, so if I go back into this orchestration service, I can go and say create random O token and then I can go here and say expected O token. And that's my random O token right here. Just like that. Okay, so what's left here? What's what's left basically is to go and say, uh, let's set up the expectations, right? I need to go here and say this dot mock. So we're gonna start with O tokenization. Sorry, tokenization service mock. We're gonna set it up, and then we're gonna go and say service service dot oops service dot um, uh, tokenize. And there's our query, and this guy returns returns what uh, returned tokens. This one is easy, right? Because we're basically passing a query, and we're going back and saying here's the, here's the tokens that you want outside of that query. Whether they're right or wrong doesn't matter. We only care that they're right at this level because we want to make sure that the mapping happens correctly. Okay, cool. Now what? The next one is the projection, right? So it's projection set up and here's a service and this is project tokens and this guy's expected expected input projected tokens this is not going to work why because the mock is saying it has to be the same reference so we need something like it is it is same projected tokens as like this and then we need to kind of wrap that up Okay, and we don't have that guy yet, but we will. So this guy here returns this like this, and then returns, and this is returned projected tokens. Okay, how do we implement this little guy in here? That same projected tokens as, how do we do that? Let's fix that. Let's go here and say, private static expression expression and this expression will take in a funk of a a projected token array and a boolean so same projected tokens as and here is your projected tokens array so this is the expected projected tokens right and then we want to go here and say well we can't really fat arrow this because we already went to the next level right so this guy is going to return actual projected tokens right and now we need that compare the thing that will compare two arrays together you know without caring about the reference right so there is a library for that actually if you go into Let's see, if you go into uh, compare logic, <laughs> is it, um, let's see, compare logic, what's this cool library called? Knit common, no, that's not the one. Um, 
let's see maybe I can I can find it in some of the projects it's in in compare or something like that let's see so this is this just looking at some of this is a beautiful thing about building projects in a consistent manner you know it you can every project becomes a reference every single project becomes a reference so compare in object compare net objects okay very cool library works great here we go okay and we can now use that guy we can go here and say uh, private read-only I compare logic So that's compare. Usually I'll, I I misspell this one. So let's try here to not misspell it. I compare logic to compare compare logic. Yep, perfect. And then in here I'm gonna go and say compare logic equal new compare logic just like that. Okay. Okay. So we have compare logic out of the way. Now I can go here and say this dot compare. Oops. Oh, I made this static so I can't call a private class member because it requires an instance of that class. So this is compare logic dot compare. And here's my expected projected tokens. And here's my actual projected tokens. And that should do the trick. Oh, we need to say R equal. It's a weird API, but it works. So if it works, it works, right? Here you go. like that okay same projected tokens as so I can now go back here and say yeah it is same projected tokens as <clears throat> and then the last one would be the O tokenization service mock set that guy up and then service service dot service dot um, uh, 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 O tokenize it should also say it is same O tokens as, and this is expected input O tokens, and that guy should return the expected tokens. I should say, you know, random token should say return token, returned O token, like this. So that means the random O token becomes this guy here. And the return token becomes the expected token, just like that. Okay. So this will be the returned O token. Okay, okay, okay. This is all good news. This is all good news. Now, the last thing we want to do basically is to go and say, I need a same O tokens as, which is pretty much the same thing as this guy, except that instead of uh, projected tokens, it's going to be O tokens. So O token, there you go, is O token, and this is expected. This is Alt, Control, Shift, Left. It will take only one word at a time, which is cool. Control period, we'll rename. And then this should be also O tokens. We can minimize the size of this then. There you go. Ah, still a little bit bigger, but yeah, that should kind of do the trick. <sighs> okay, so this should be same O tokens as, right? Same O tokens as. Yeah, this is not going to work because you already took the second line. There you go. Okay. So let's go back here into the test. Yeah, and this is my return token. Okay. The last thing is O token, actual O token. Uh, this dot service, which is the orchestration service dot O tokenize query, and here's your input query. And then everything we just did here, we just need to verify that it's actually been called once, right? In addition to verifying that the actual token should be equivalent to expected, expected O token. 
Cool. Great. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so let's go here and say verify, verify, verify. This is times. Come on. Times once. My uh, my tabs are are all screwed up. That's bad. Let's take all of that. Let's take all of that. Okay. Last thing. Want to make sure that your mocks haven't been called for any other purpose other than what we just did. So this is the uh, projection service mock, verify no other calls, and then this dot o tokenization service verify, not the orchestration service. I usually just search, I say mock, and then it finds all the all the variables our private class members are named mocked. Okay, that's a test. Okay. The test will verify all of these cool things. Still not happy about the tabs though, so we need to kind of fix that. Let's take everything to the back and then let's let's do this. Yeah, is it the same thing here or what? Yeah, this is okay, I think. Yeah, this is good. What about this guy? Yeah, this guy is not okay. Let's take all that to the back. Okay. So technically, if I run this test, it should fail miserably. Why? Because um, we haven't really done anything to make this pass. So let's find tests. Test Explorer. Slap that guy in there. Here we go. And where is the test that I care about? The orchestration services, right? Let's run them all. I know there's a couple that will that will fail because of internal mock. We'll we'll figure it out. <sighs> Let's see here. Okay, so this guy here should be failing, which is this guy. Don't see a light bulb over it. Here it is. So why is this failing? It says not implemented exception. That's a great commit point where I can go here and say, okay, this is my failing test. Now let's make it pass. Here comes the fun part, right? We need to go to this auto-tokenized query implementation and basically go and say map uh, the map the tokens, create a new token. If the token type is this, then go ahead and map it to whatever you know object it needs, right? So it, the first one is easy, right? I can just go here and say tokens. You know this is uh, tokens, and I can go and say this dot uh, tokenization service dot tokenize, and I'm passing in my query. No harm, no foul. This one is easy, right? But converting this into a um, a a projected tokens. That's where the magic happens, right? So let's write a new function here. A private uh, projected tokens, right? Uh, map to projected tokens. This guy will take tokens in and will return. Projected tokens, all right? <coughs> so how is this gonna work? We need we need to basically just convert the type for the most part, right? Whatever the type that's coming back, you know, we need to kind of figure out the right identification for this. So here's how I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and say tokens dot select, right? For every token, I want you to return a projected token. And this projected token will have some information. So the projected type is easy. This is unidentified because we don't know what it is, right? The raw value is also easy. I can just go here and say token dot value. The token type, you know, that's that's pretty much a match to the token type that is coming in. So that one should also be easy. It would be token dot type, just like that, just like that. 
right? So this is here my projected tokens, projected tokens like this. Let's push this a little further and I don't know, uh, to array. Would it be happy? And then, uh, you know, uh, we need to call the service, right? So we need to go here and say this dot uh, projected token service dot project tokens, and this will take projected tokens as input parameters. Just like that. We still need to return the type though, so we're going to return that, and then I'm going to go and say project tokens. Okay, so that gives me back, see, the whole statement itself becomes its own private function because they are they are single-purpose. That whole statement about the projected tokens is single-purpose. So it fits the place where it becomes into one function. I should update the C-sharp standard to kind of adhere to that rule. Okay, so there's projected tokens. And then this is project tokens with takes in tokens as parameters. The next one is just as cool as this one, right? We're just gonna go and say, I want a function. Let's honor the chronological order here. So it's private, and this is OToken, and this will be OTokenize, and this will take projected, uh, yeah, projected tokens array. and kind of convert them into a bunch of O tokens and then O tokens. So this will be projected tokens dot select projected token new O token. Let's take that to the next level. So that I guess that that means we can take that guy down by one. Right, and and this guy needs to be dot two array, right? And then we want to add the values here. Okay, so the raw value that's easy, right? That's a projected token dot raw value, and then the projected type that would be the projected token dot type, and then the type of the token would be the projected. Oh, that would be o token that unidentified o token type that I'd unidentified cool and then the last thing we need to do is to go and say this is my o token service dot o tokenize and here's my o tokens this should do the trick this should take care of everything right this should make that test pass so I'm gonna go here and say return uh, um, uh, o tokenize and take in these projected tokens and return the O tokenization. Would that do the trick? Did we did we play this right? I don't know. Let's find out. There it is. Test is passing, right? Just like that, right? So pretty much what we expected. This is very clean and very good code that you can rely on, right? It, it just goes and does what it needs to to kind of get get the ball rolling you know with uh, with these services okay so so this is a good stopping point you know the next session will be basically talking about the validations right the orchestration service is also going to do its own validations you know that's that's there uh, we're gonna just do go about doing something like that right um, and you know there will be exception handling there will be uh, luckily with this one we won't need to use any kind of reflection internal mock anything because we already have enough dependencies that we can just latch into you know or attach any exception to it so it should be very very straightforward uh, let's see what did this guy clean up just a whole bunch of things that we're forgetting through nice okay so I'm gonna put that test here I'm gonna say pass Okay, so that should take care of that. I'm going to push this into its own branch. And then, you know, this just this is just a step closer into kind of really flatten out the mystery of OData, at least at the select level. And then we can go to filter and all these other, you know, cool capabilities and cool functions. 
um, we might need to add in some randomization, you know, so we don't have to kind of ensure that the call has happened in a particular order. With orchestration services, it's very likely that you're going to need to go and say, well, I want to make sure that the call happened in the right order, right? This happens if it's a, if it's in any way, shape, or form possible, you know, that you actually get to something like that. But randomization will take care of that, and that's really the the point of this. Um, so we will randomize. We will randomize this. We'll make it better. I'm going to create a, a draft PR just for people to kind of take a look and see. So this will be our orchestrations, right? And this is o tokenize uh, OData query, right? So this is a draft pull request. You know, take a look at it, you know, reach out if you have any questions. This is pretty much the, you know, the gist of it. You know, very, very simple, straightforward when it comes to orchestrations. All the heavy lifting and the heavy work is happening on these dead end functions right these you know uh, these functions where you know you have to kind of you know think about what are you going to do with these tokens how are you going to break them apart and all that but moving onwards for there it should be very 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 straightforward all right with that being said you know just you know keep that in mind if you have any questions comments concerns drop a comment comment section don't forget to like and subscribe <laughs> i'll see you in another video take care